Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Hassan here. Today we are going to talk about the basics of the, you could say, the toolkit or how you start on your spiritual path. Um, and I want to um, mention, first of all, to those who did not follow a shaykh yet, there are some things you can do. Um, if you didn't find a shaykh, a spiritual guide, you can still do certain things. So I will start with that. I will go all the way back to the beginning of making sure that the foundation, your religious foundation is, is strong enough. Okay, because, <coughs> excuse me, one problem that you might find, and uh, not all the shuyuk does this, but some of them, uh, if you go and let's say you hear about the sheikh uh, who's giving a talk in uh, some mas masjid or in a mosque or in some Islamic center or something, and you hear, oh, this is a very good chair and, you know, very popular and and so on, um, and you say, ah, I want to go and give by a, um, <laughs> you know, uh, maybe you shouldn't rush, first of all, um, because there are some to you, they want, they don't just accept by a, and even, you know, Allah won't facilitate you giving it, the, getting the chance, uh, for example, uh, you know, you go to a, a sheikh and, uh, a, meeting, a gathering where there's a share or some kind of event. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, there are many people around and he has his, his, his followers and his senior students and whatnot. And of course, they are all going to make sure that people are not going to bother the share, you know, so <coughs> because they don't know who you are, maybe. Uh, so unless you have some kind of appointment to, to actually talk to him with somebody who knows him well or who can make sure that you actually get a chance to talk to him, you might not even be able to get close enough to actually say a word or not, you know. So, um, so that's one thing. Another thing is, even if you do get a chance to talk to him, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he might say, okay, uh, did you learn your fardain? <laughs> Uh, the, what is your akhida? What do you follow? Uh, so he might say, "Ah, come back when uh, when you have made those things clear, and you have actually, and you know what is your obligations in Islam." Because y if you start on a path, on a spiritual path, without knowing the the the, the, the what is you know fard or wajib for you, and the halal and haram and so on and and you know really at, as far as you are concerned and this is an obligation for every single believer it is that you know at least as long as, long as you are reaching a responsibility age or <coughs> past the puberty age that you know besides the fact that you you must know how to pray okay because you must pray five times a day. This is a must. It's not, an you know, like a choice. Uh, so you, not only do you have to pray, but you have to know how to pray because you have to know that your prayers are valid. So it, it, means, it means that you need to know how to make wudu without making a mistake that invalidates the wudu or how to pray without making mistakes that invalidate uh, the the prayer and and there are other things other than that I'm not going to go through all of those but you know so um, you would have to follow uh, one of the four matabs you know I'm I'm assuming that if you are not in one of the matabs you wouldn't be interested in learning anything I have to say anyway because uh, that's the only way you can follow a, a traditional Islam is through the four matabs otherwise you are in some other uh, well, you could be Shia, of course, but um, and Allah knows best. We're not going to be talking about that. But you could be following the Salafi um, way, as they call it, Wahhabi, you know, whatever. And this is also not about. I'm not going to be discussing about them. So, uh, but you have to know what madhab you follow. You have to know the the Fard Ain, um, according to that madhab. Uh, so that means that 
how to pray, how to how to uh, make we do, how to pray, uh, when to pray, what invalidates the prayers, and uh, what constitutes um, some kind of dispensations in different situations, like tribal prayers and so on. How to fast? All of these different things. That is a, a you know obligation. So if you are uh, you know past the age of uh, of uh, where you consider yourself in Islam as an adult that you have to pray you have to learn these things if you didn't know it already then you know stop this video and go and find out because then you're not gonna be wanting to focus on these things this is something that's very, very important um, besides that <clears throat> I would advise you to learn to take a, a foundation course in Aqidah because this is uh, also uh, something that's essential for you to know that your belief is um, valid that you are not having some doubts in the beliefs and you know whether it's uh, Ashari or Asari or um, uh, what is it Maturidi and you know there are a couple of different schools that uh, pretty much covering the same thing. There might be some slight details that doesn't not necessarily invalidate, but there's just a little bit of difference of opinions between the scholars, which one is, is the most precise, but um, they are all okay. Um, and Allah knows best. Um, uh, <coughs> yeah, so, so you want to know these things. Okay, so that's that's the first step. And then there are things that you can do because you might not even, as I was mentioning before, uh, even if you, there is a, a, a sheikh that has an event, you might not even be able to talk to him, uh, might not be practical or whatever. Uh, and Or there might not even be a sheikh in your neighborhood or in your community or in anywhere you can go easily. Um, so um, it might be something like going to another country later on, saving up some money. Uh, you might go into to, uh, Yemen to, uh, you know, if you are interested in following the Habaib, for example, there's some Suyuk there, like Habib Omar, Habib Ali, and, and so on. Uh, Habib Khadim, um, amazing Suyuk, really great. Um, or you might go to Morocco, there are some satellites and uh, Alawi uh, and other Titania and you know different tarikas there too. That's fine. But anyway, so you might spend some time saving up uh, excuse me, saving up some money to, to actually go there. And then what to do while you're waiting for that. All right, unless you are, you know, rich and you can just, you know, get on a plane. Well you can't really get on a plane right now because of the COVID nineteen situation. Uh, probably not anyway I'm not sure they are letting anybody in uh, to most of these countries but anyway so let's say you've got to save up it might take you six months a year something like that what can you do in the meantime so this is what I want to talk about today uh, so besides learning of our dying okay and <clears throat> it's not a bad thing besides the far line which is what is let me define that by the way the far line is what is obligatory for you to know in your situation, all right? So that means how to pray, how to fast, how to make wudu, and so on. And then that can change with time because should you, for example, um, starting, maybe you start in college, there might be some rules in the, in the, in the uh, madhab you're following or, and certainly there is usually some rules in Islam on how you deal with that because how are you going to go and study? You might take a student loan, so there might be some rules that you might to learn about how, whether which is the halal way to get you know, support to go and get your studies paid and um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, so, and you might need to go to study with a car, so you need a car insurance, what kind of insurance is halal, and you might 
have to borrow money to buy a car and if it's a necessity you might get a dispensation because if you're taking a loan and there's some kind of interest and there are many things that you might need to know depending on your situation. If you study to become a doctor, for example, you need to know the, <coughs> excuse me, the Sharia. Uh, uh, you need to know the Sharia according to uh, medicine, for example. At least as you are studying, you need to improve, increase your knowledge regarding that. So there are many. So this situation, I mean, you might be getting married so you need to know your rights and responsibilities of marriage in Islam and so on and so on I don't want to go I can continue of course but so so that thing is something that you need to remember because if you are ignorant about some of these things and then you are on a spiritual journey it can it can destroy that journey it can make you really misguided and it's very dangerous if you try to improve your spiritual level and then all your basics are, are you know full of holes or uh, unfulfilled responsibilities and so on and it's not a good idea all right all right um so where was i <laughs> so okay so so that's you need to know that okay what then step one I mean, that would be step two then, of course. You take the Fardain, you take the Aqidah. So let's say step three, all right? If you have, unless you have already dealt with those two. Okay, make sure you know it. And if you have done it many years ago, maybe you want to get a refresher course, you know. Find the Maqasid of your Matab, because usually they have like a, like a book that's like, this is just covering the Fardain, like a, like uh, Imam Nawawi have a maqasid uh, of, of the Shafi Matab and um, there are a couple of those similar ones in the, sh in the Maliki Matabs. I um, don't remember the name of the one in the Hanafi Matab, but you know, or the Hanbali for that matter, but uh, you can ask who, whoever is in your Matab that you know that has that knowledge. Next thing, do your prayers, all right? Because you want to increase your spiritual level and then you don't have khushua in your prayer. All right? That's, it's, I mean, I see this all the time and it's, you know, and yeah, I might be guilty of that myself, at least I might have been uh, and might be to some extent still because uh, not that I would say you can't, go on and do something besides the five prayers unless you have perfect perfect hosua in your prayer uh, of course that's ridiculous uh, it, it takes a long time okay and some of those extra uh, activities you might have spiritual activities might help you in your hosua so which i will of course uh, talk about but your hosua in your prayer is something you have to work on from the beginning all right, and if I should describe what is the khusua in your prayer, I guess you can say focus or awareness or attention to what is it you're doing. Because in your prayer, in your salah, in your fard salah, at least the five prayers, when you, um, and it, it technically starts at the at the wudu at the you know purification. So when you start your purification, already there you you, you your mind gets prepared. You you know it's, it it you are, you are, it's a physical purification, but you're also kind of purifying or um, preparing your mind um, to do the prayer itself. So when you're standing in front of Allah in your Salah in your prayer, um, you have that's it. Your your mind is not on. Uh, uh, am I having pancakes for dessert, or am I? Uh, is somebody coming to visit me later on, or uh, oh wait a minute, did I remember to do this and this and this? Uh, I mentioned. I think I mentioned that uh, in the, in the other video, the previous video that uh, the Prophet Sallam <coughs> was so concerned about his khusur and his prayer, in, in, about his attention, um, that during the time he was leading the prayer, uh, he went, he suddenly left, and then when he came back, they asked him, what, what, 
happened and he was saying that he had this piece of gold in his house that was in his mind and he he went to give it to somebody to give it as a charity and uh, then it's out of his mind obviously uh, because it was disturbing him um, that it was there <coughs> he didn't want to leave it for after so um, alhamdulillah you know it's, it's, that's a great thing um, so uh, so that's the what it is that when you are in front of course in, in front of Allah in your prayer um, you make your uh, takbir ikram you know your beginning takbir and you start uh, reciting uh, fajiha and, and you know while you're doing that um, if I should describe it the best way I can is that um, you're talking to Allah as if Allah is right in front of you okay so you're talking to Allah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen or Rahman Rahim and so on and <clears throat> the, which is another reason why it's very important that those surahs that you recite in your prayer that you know the meaning because that is helping to improve your kushua if you don't know and you don't have to know all the Quran you know word by word what is the meaning and so on and so on you just should have at least what is the Fatiha because <clears throat> besides that is being a, a part of the prayer is is a dua as well so you are asking Allah um, to 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 guide you and and to to lead you on the straight path and so on and uh, that he is the you know your sustainer uh, and and so um, so when you are when you are in your prayer and you are saying the fatiha for example and whatever other surahs you decide to incorporate in your prayer you are doing the fatiha for sure to have a valid prayer so when you're doing that you are talking to Allah you got to remember that right it's not like you're just you know running off you know with the blah 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 you know uh, so let's get this prayer done and get on with your life <laughs> no way then you should a.m. Okay, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> anyway, sorry for that. Um, so, um, so it's very important that you know you put your full respect in that prayer and your your attention to to who are you praying to? You're praying to Allah. It's not just like you're praying out in the air. You know, you're praying to Allah. Let's not forget that. And you're talking to Allah. Whether you are doing out loud in Makrib and Isha, or you are doing the Lohar and Asr, for example, where you are doing it silently or almost completely without sign, with the sound, um, you know, like a whisper maybe. Um, so you have to understand that, okay? And then another thing um, that I might want to mention here is. There are some people, some scholars who says that it's, you know, it's very good if you can um, visualize the Kaaba in front of you uh, because you are facing the Qibla uh, and if you're facing the Qibla, let's say um, you have a wall in front of you and you're looking at the wall, right? Okay, so you're looking at the wall, that might not be... You know, or it might be something on the wall, you know, it might be distracting or it might be, you know, that's, so your attention is on, on the wall. But it would be better if you could put your attention as, um, <coughs> excuse me, as if you saw the Kaaba. All right. Uh, one, when, while, while I was in, in, in Morocco some years ago, I, I got this idea. Um, because I, 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 one of the uh, teachers was telling this story about somebody who uh, was very good at visualizing, uh, you know, like you turn on a, a, a switch and boom, he had the cover in front of him. Uh, I mean, really had the cover in front of him. Uh, while the others were just working on trying to get the cover in front of them. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, I wanted to try that. So what I did was um, I got a picture of the Kaaba, a nice little frame, you know, not too small, you know, but, you know, reasonable. I think it was something like, maybe like that. And I put it right the, 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 in, in our little Savia there, 
uh, the Kibla was right to the corner. So it was even a little bit difficult to put the picture because, you know, the corner is like that and then you have the picture is like this. So, but it, I managed to get it. So it was exactly, um, uh, you know, facing me, it was like this. Uh, and then I was looking straight at it and still focused and still had the Kibla. And so while I was praying, that was what I had in front of me. And it helped me to visualize it. So even when I was praying in other places, um, in you know, in some masjid or in, in at somebody's house and so on, that picture was still there. You know, even when I was in another place, I could still see the Kaaba. It made me. It made it easier. So it, that is a, maybe a little bit a little trick <laughs> you might call it. So that helped a lot. So that was a good thing for me. And. Uh, <clears throat> so that's what we want to do in our prayer to really and but you know still t remember that we are talking to Allah right of course you know that's the bait Allah uh, you know this is the house of Allah this is not Allah but the house of Allah so Allah is not a you know a square building Allah is Allah you know so so of course we got to remember that we don't you know misunderstand that you know um uh um, yes. So anyway, so so that's where you start. You try to improve your salah. So the so start building up your awareness during the wudu. When you do your prayer, remember that you are talking to Allah. So you are you are talking like you are talking directly, like as if Allah was in front of you. And we know that because there is strong hadith, sahih hadith about you know. Pray as if you see if if uh, if you see Allah and you know that Allah will see you even if you don't see Him. So um, you know anyway. So that's where you start. Um, then another thing, also, you should try to when you finish your prayer, you do some zikir. You know you probably know the. Uh, subhanallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, Allah akbar, the 33, 33, 33, and then la ilaha illallah, wa lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamd, wa lahu al-hamd, wa lahu al-hamd, wa lahu That's, I mean, you probably know this one, right? So do that one, at least. Uh, you can do uh, Ayatul Kursi, you can do some other, you know, however you feel like. Um, but whatever you're doing of the Thikir, that's another thing you want to do because a lot of people they're just doing like routine so it's like they might be thinking about something else they're just doing a subhanallah, 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 you know and then it, their mind is not even on that but they're just doing it you know and it's that's a dangerous part of of doing these kind of things it shouldn't be like a, a, a what do you call it a route you know like a, something you just do like a robot like automatically you know you don't even have to put your mind to it you can do it and yeah, we can all pretty much do all the prayers without even thinking about what we are doing. You can almost do our prayers in our sleep, and we probably can, some of us anyway, uh, which is of course not what we want. But uh, my point is that you got to make sure that even your dhikr, you know what your self, what does subhanAllah mean? What does alhamdulillah mean? What does Allahu Akbar mean? And, and then if each time you say, you might say astaghfirullah al you know, you, and what does that mean? And then not only what does that mean, but you put your niyyah into that, you know. So when you are saying, Astaghfirullah, forgive me Allah, then you might reflect on your sins, you know, the sins that you know of, and then, you know, remember that there are things that you're not aware of maybe, and you're even thinking those things. Uh, should be included in that, you know, so you really mean it when you're saying Astaghfirullah, so it's not just some words, some formula that you might just say because you didn't, you just finished your prayer and that's what you're supposed to say. So, you know, put that in it, put put that niya, that intention, that awareness in those dhikr that you do, all right. <clears throat> and there is a lot of things that you can say, not just in the prayer, you have the the Kitab al Adkar, I think it's called by Imam Nawawi. Uh, yeah, I think it's Nawawi <laughs> with that one. That's a nice thick book, and it's got so hundreds of different formulations for when you're eating, when you're going to sleep, and after praying, before praying, and it's it's a great book. 
but you know, I'm sure you can even find online, you know, a, a bunch of things that has a good uh, uh, example from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi from the from the hadith that shows he was doing this at, at certain times. Um, so you want to do that. And then, of course, you want to do some uh, sunnah prayer, nafila prayer, uh, and um, I'm not going to mention how many rakahs and so, because that can also be different from, uh, from uh, mazhab to mazhab. So, you know, but there are uh, at each prayer, either before or after, or, or both before and after, depending on which prayer it is, there are some, some extra, some prayer you can say. And even in those prayers, don't just, you know, say, ah, I got to do this so I can get my reward for doing extra things, right? If your mind is not in it, then you don't expect any reward from it, right? Uh, you have to put your mind in it, all right? Oh yeah, there was one thing I wanted to mention. When you finish your prayer uh, and you are finished with your your um, your dhikr, your subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar, or, and whatever else you decide to do, you should feel sad that you finished. That you know, well, now your time is up with Allah. Well, time is up, right? You know what I mean. I hope, uh, and and you have to wait for the next time. All right, so you have to kind of feel, um, how you say, miss that you, you're, you're looking forward to it, that you're missing that, that action that you were doing with your right kosua and so on. All right, so that's a very important thing that, you know, that you, know, you, you, are, you get happy. Ah, I'm going to pray now. You, get, you should be excited. It should be something in your heart, you know, that, ah, alhamdulillah, I'm not, it's time to pray. Not like, oh, it's time to pray. Let me get that duty done so it's out done with so I can get on with my life or with my work or whatever. It's that dangerous, you know, don't do like that. Uh, make sure that it's something that excites you and you are happy and that is the most important thing in your life because it is. And I hope you understand that it is because if you didn't understand that, then you need to learn that because that is, must be. So, so feel that, oh, I have to wait another three hours for the next prayer. Okay. They are secure for that as well, but that's good. That's a good thing to do, all right. And then you you get sad, or it's over, and then you get excited when you get closer and closer and closer to that time for the next prayer, and then ah, we're gonna pray again, all right? <laughs> okay, um, yes. Um, so uh, then the next thing I would say uh, is between the prayer. I mean, assuming that you will have done some uh, extra prayer, nafila sunnah prayer. Uh, according to whatever madhab you follow, uh, which of course you have the attention, the khusu and that. And then between the prayer, there's another thing that's very important to keep that, 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 uh, that focus, taqwa, the, 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 the khusu. Uh, taqwa is one thing, khusu is another thing, but they kind of go together. Um, so you want to try and, and keep yourself in wudu, in a state of purification, in a pure state. Uh, and that means that anytime you break, you may, you know, let some gas go, or you might go to the toilet, or some other thing that might break your wudu. Uh, as soon as that happens, refresh your wudu, renew it. And when you renew it, make sure that two things, okay? The first thing is that you're doing that, that you're telling yourself, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing something that is sunnah, that the Prophet used to do, and I love to do what he used to do. All right, make sure that that's one of the things, that's one of the, the qualifications of you doing the wudu, uh, whether it's for the prayer or whether it's uh, to just to keep the wudu, uh, all right, the state of wudu. Another thing is to make that khusua as well. All right, put the kosu while you are while you're making would do you know besides that you you can even do that in every single move of the um, you know there's a there's a there's an extra paraka you know you could it's not a secret but many many people might not know this but you know you 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 make your niya all right and when you make your niya you say the prophet hasn't made his niya right I'm doing my niya because I love the prophet all right. And then you rinse your mouth, 
and you again you 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 don't have to say it out loud i'm making my uh, i'm rinsing out my mouth you know you don't have to say all these words just have that in your mind put that as a kosua like a, like an awareness that you are making your rinsing of mouth you're saying uh, bismillahirrahmanirrahim and you're rinsing again you are doing every, every every time you're doing sniffing of water taking it out every move this is one move, this is another move, you know, this is another move. Maybe you make sure that between your, uh, under your nose, when you're washing your, don't just be like that because it's dry under your nose. So you make sure that you get, you know, everything close to it. So it's, you know, but depending on what method you follow, there might be some difference. So we're not going to go into that. But every move you do in your wudu, make sure that you keep reminding yourself all right, not with words, but in your mind that this the prophet used to do this. I do this to please Allah and to be out of love for the prophet. You know, it has a great barakah. All right, so so and that you have the khusua. You're doing this. I'm um, doing this. Be, besides that, it's the sunnah and the prophet ﷺ did it. I'm also doing this because I want to get the benefits of being in a state of wudu because as we know that this is like the armor of the believer. This is our protection against Satan and, you know, the the men and the jinn and, you know, whoever is is uh, following Satan because there are, unfortunately, some who are following Satan knowing or knowingly or unknowingly. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's another thing. And then... Um, <clears throat> Another thing that you can do, all right, um, by the way, when I was talking about Sunnah prayer or Nafila prayer, um, you should at least do the, um, the two rakahs before your morning prayer. Uh, so if you are Maliki, you might be calling your morning, the, the obligatory prayer, you might call it Sup, and the other one we call Fajr, but other matter call the other one Fajr, uh, the first one Fajr, the obligatory Fajr and the other one soup. But, you know, you do that, the other two, all right, that's just the Fatiha alone, all right? So that's like a minimum. Uh, and then the uh, Witter, the two and one raka, you do that and try and do the right uh, surahs according to, to the Sunnah, um, Al-Ala and Al-Kafirun, and then in the in the uh, shaf prayer and then al, in the wither you do al um, al falak and nas uh, uh, al ikhlas al falak and nas in the in the in that one raka the you know there are some people they put they just make a three raka prayer but uh, anyway that's different from my tabu that's uh, I'm not gonna go into those details. Uh, so, so that's like the minimum of Sunnah prayer that I would say um, that's uh, very high uh, importance. So you do all the, you know, all the different Sunnah prayers from before and after uh, the different prayers. Um, uh, I'm assuming that you're doing that. You're doing the Kosua, you're keeping her in, in a state of wudu, and then uh, with the Kosua, and then... Uh, if you want to improve your spiritual state, besides that, besides having all of the right niya and the right kosua and the right awareness uh, constantly, not just in the ibadah, in the prayers and in the wudu and, and so on, then start improving your knowledge and start improving your practice of the sunnah. So, um, uh, for example, get one of the Shema'il books uh, the books that uh, basically, like the Shema El of Tiamidi, or um, if you understand Arabic, you can read the one from uh, Sheikh Al Yaqubi, which uh, is um, maybe more extensive. Uh, it has certain, some examples that you won't find in the Shema El um, uh, So, anyway, but at least the Shema El Tiamidi is quite easy. Uh, for English or French, and I think it's in Spanish. It's in a couple of languages anyway, so so it's uh, it's easy accessible. Um, unfortunately, the the Shema'il from uh, Sheikh Al Yaqubi is not translated yet. Uh, many people waiting for that. So in case he should be 
watching this, uh, please, please share. Let us get that one translated. A lot of people will really want it. Uh, and I think he promised that it would be done s as soon as possible. But he's been a busy man, so Allah keeps him busy. Anyway, so Shamail is a good way to, you know, you can take a course or you can basically just buy it on Amazon or in the book, Islamic bookstore and then start reading because there's a lot of good examples of things that we can do such as, you know, entering our house, put the right foot forward, going out, we put the left foot forward and the same in the masjid, obviously. And uh, even when we go into a vehicle, we say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. When you go into your house, you say, Assalamu alaikum, even when it's empty or when you assume it to be empty because it's, it's never empty, you know, um, very unlikely that it's empty. There might be some angels there, you know, if you are lucky, um, fortunate, and at least you have to remember there's always two angels with you. Uh, so you get improve your practice. So you start, you can start with one thing, add one thing, add one thing, one by one, one by one, get it incorporated into your daily habits, <coughs> you know, uh, putting on, there's some dua you can say when you're putting on new clothes, there's of course, um, eating, always eating with your right hand, drinking, you know, drinking in a certain way, take a little sip, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, a little bit sip, a little bit sip, you know, and so on. There are so many, you know, details. I'm not going to go, this is not about that. <laughs> and there are already people better than me that has explained all of these, Shama'il and so on. Uh, so anyway, that's another place to start. All right. And, and trust me, you do that. You incorporate a lot of these things and you are consistent in, in performing these sunnas. You will see an improvement, spiritual improvement. And the fact is, as I said in the previous video, your ibadah is Allah's gift to you. So when you are having this, I'm doing a five prayer on time and I'm doing extra prayers, I'm giving sadaqah, I'm you know, adding, 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 but I never see any results. Those things are the results. <laughs> the fact that Allah made it possible for you to do those things, as opposed to other people who are not getting around to it for whatever reason, that's a baraka. That's a gift to you. You know, your your your, and especially when it's other things than your your fard. You know, like when it's uh, supplementary prayers, supplementary activities, sunnah things that are sunnah. You know, that's a, you know, the fact that you can remember to put your right foot forward when you enter your house and you put that and you remember that this is the sunnah. Because that's a very important part of performing sunnah is to, to put that in your mind every time you're eating with your right hand. You know, you might eating, uh, you know, maybe you keep yourself in a third food, a third water and a third air. That's the sunnah. You, whenever you can do that, you remember it is a sunnah. Because the fact that you remind yourself it's a sunnah and you want to do the sunnah, you love doing the sunnah and the, you love the Prophet, those are things that always, you know, ex, uh, what do you call it, um, increase the, 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 the blessings in it, the barakah in it. So it's very important. Uh, I've got to be careful, this video is not going to get too long. Um, so, so that's important okay so we got your 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 fardain your aqida your your obligatory uh, prayers and uh, sunnah and then adding sunnah activities okay adding sunnah activities is very important okay and then uh, you're already <laughs> you're already ahead of a lot of people because so many people maybe the majority of the muslims today are not even able to do that because they are in distressed uh, uh, lifestyles. There are so many reasons why uh, they are all, many of them, you know, probably have good excuses for not being able to because of responsibilities and so on. And there, <coughs> some of them, excuse me, some of them will feel blessed if they can just do their five prayers because that is even a struggle for them. And may Allah make it easier for them obviously um, but that's not easy there's a lot of people there you have too many responsibilities single parents with kids who are uh, having two three jobs just for them to do the five prayers is a struggle sometimes all right so you know make dua for those people 
You know, really, if you want to make dua, that's another thing, by the way. Make dua, make a lot of dua for your, for not for yourself, but for others. But of course, for yourself as well. But do making dua for other people, you know, and specific people even if you can, if you if you know single parents who are struggling, make dua for them. Make dua that you know that Allah will will give them uh, ease and make uh, you know make something good for them. And and it will be back. It will be a reward for you. You know, it's a very good habit. You know, even you could say if if, if you make ten dua, nine of them should be for somebody else, for other people, not one other person, but different other people maybe. And and the one will be for you. You know, if you can, it would be better. All right. And then when you make dua, you really have to kusu on your dua. Remember that it's just uh, something you just blah, 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 run out of your tongue. You know, it's something that's really, you know, you really mean it. And if you if it if your emotions get into it and you even start, you know, uh, your eyes swell up and you start crying, that's even better. You know, if you if it's real, you know, then that's a good thing because then you, you know, of course, you certainly know that you mean it if you can. Hold back your your tears. Um, uh, so that's pretty much you could say that's the basics. If you can go through these things that I've mentioned so far, you are you have a great baraka. You know if you can do that, and if Allah facilitates for you to be able to do those things, and never uh, the last thing I should mention here is never feel proud of those actions because it's not from you it's from Allah this is very important whatever good you do is from Allah it's you you have no you can't credit yourself you should just thank Allah that you are able that you are being given the uh, the ability to to perform these these things you know that's all you have to do don't ever feel proud that you can do the five prayers on time don't ever man I'm good I'm a good Muslim you know <laughs> never feel that you know you're doing yourself a great disservice by having that kind of pride and arrogance you know it's all from Allah if, if Allah you know wasn't putting that you know into your life you know who would you be what would you be you know you know really you have to remember that um, all right I think I'm gonna stop here for now and uh, I hope you have some benefits uh, in from this video. Um, but this is where I would start going through these things. And until you have t at least achieved these things as a consistent uh, part of your life, you know, yeah, there are, you can go to this, uh, um, what do you call it? You can visit the maqams of these saints here and there and so on. Uh, you know, but have make sure you have this foundation, you know, well consistent in your life before you start dreaming of the skies and, you know, the Sufi masters were doing all these things and all of that, you know. You know, there are things that you can add and I'm going to talk, inshallah, about this in the next video. I'm going to talk about the Dalai'il, the Buddha and, and doing weirds and, and visiting the maqams and all of these things i'm going to be covering that inshallah in the next video because that's kind of the next step and this next video will be more like uh, certain things that you can add after that consistent you know the other things i mentioned now there are certain things that you can add without necessarily following a shirk and then when you follow a shirk there are other things that you might add as well and some of the things overlap all right, so that will be the next video, inshallah. So may Allah bless you and keep you safe <laughs> in this Corona virus times, and uh, and um, you know make dua for me, inshallah. That would be nice. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.